Thank God it is Friday. The second week of impeachment is just about over. But before we leave for the weekend, we've got some stories that you guys might have missed. Bibi Netanyahu might be going bye bye. He's being indicted. Meanwhile, here in the United States, Elizabeth Warren gave one of her biggest speeches on race following the debate on Wednesday. And Democratic lawmakers in Congress want Trump to give advisor Stephen Miller the boot. I'm Jamal Simmons. Here's why you should care. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was indicted Thursday on three charges, fraud, bribery, and breach of trust. The charges are part of a long-running corruption case and bring Netanyahu's political future into question. Bibi is the longest-serving Israeli Prime Minister and now the first to face criminal charges while he's in office. He's being accused of giving and offering official favors to many media companies in exchange for good press or expensive gifts. According to the New York Times, Israel's attorney general said in a public news conference, the public interest requires that we live in a country where no one is above the law. In his own press conference, Netanyahu defended himself with echoes from his political ally in the United States, Donald Trump. The prime minister said the case against him is made up of lies. He turned the spotlight on the police and prosecutors, saying they are the ones who should be investigated. Investigating the investigators. Sound familiar? According to Israeli laws, Netanyahu doesn't have to step down, and because this is the first time a sitting PM is facing criminal charges, it's unclear what can legally be done next. Israel's political system is already on shaky ground. It looks like centrist coalition leader Benny Gantz may fail to form a new government. Also, if so, the country may have to hold a third election. So why should you care about all this? Donald Trump isn't the only sitting leader being accused of quid pro quo. Trump's been a staunch defender of Netanyahu, changing lots of U.S. policy toward the Middle East ally to favor Bibi's political positions. The United States has a lot of skin in the game in the region, and standing by Israel is a bedrock of our foreign policy. The question now, who's going to lead the country next? Last night in Atlanta, Senator Elizabeth Warren planted her feet in the red clay of Atlanta's history of black struggle. She traced a line from the black washerwomen's 1881 fight for better pay and better working conditions through the formation of the National Domestic Workers of America in the late mid 20th century. Warren's speech was interrupted by a few protesters who were shouted down by the crowd and ushered to meet with the senator after the rally by Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. Once Warren took back the mic, she didn't shy away from what some people call identity politics. Instead, she went all in on policies that would impact African Americans in particular. Elizabeth Warren made clear her appreciation for the work of black women throughout generations of struggle and her commitment to changing the rules for black people to tilt the scales back toward working people in general and African Americans in particular. Don't talk about race neutral laws. The federal government helped create the racial divide in this country through decades of active state-sponsored discrimination, and that means the federal government has a responsibility to fix it. And I have a plan for that. Warren detailed plans to address housing, black maternal mortality, public education, and funding historically black colleges. The Massachusetts senator was at Clark Atlanta University, just across the yard from my alma mater, Morehouse College, where Bernie Sanders held a rally in the shadow of Dr. Martin Luther King's iconic statue. Warren and Sanders weren't the only candidates appealing for black votes after Wednesday's debate. Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network held an event where Senators Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg also spoke. In addition, Senator Kamala Harris had a black women's breakfast of her own. All those candidates trail Vice President Joe Biden. He's the hands-down favorite of most black voters so far. Last week, my colleague Julia Manchester was here. She told you about the emails that Donald Trump advisor Stephen Miller sent to Breitbart before the 2016 elections. Those emails pushed for anti-immigration and white nationalist policies. The Southern Poverty Law Center's blog, Hate Watch, investigated emails leaked to them and published its findings. 
Miller, whose far-right views have come under question in the past, is now a target of over 100 Democratic lawmakers. Representative Don Beyer and Barbara Lee led their colleagues in pinning a letter to President Trump on Thursday, urging him to fire the senior advisor. In the letter, they wrote, quote, given Mr. Miller's role in shaping immigration policy for your administration, his documented dedication to extremist, anti-immigrant ideology, and conspiracy mongering is disqualifying. They pointed to Miller's heavy hand in crafting anti-immigration policy, like the travel ban against Muslim countries, nixing DACA, and scaling back refugee admissions. The White House is going to bat for Miller, though. Spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham called the Southern Poverty Law Center discredited, and White House Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley vouched for Miller, saying he, quote, loves his country and hates bigotry. Stephen Miller hates bigotry. Why you should care. Even before winning the White House, President Trump, some of his close advisors in his administration have been criticized as being anti-immigration, even racist. Remember when he called Mexicans rapists? And when he referred to some of the white supremacists in the 2017 Charlottesville clash as fine people? Many blame the president's rhetoric for encouraging those who subscribe to white supremacist and far-right ideologies. Listen, how we treat asylum seekers Human beings is an important statement to the world about American values. The person who advises the president on these matters, he matters. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. And head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.